I remember again the HBO special around 2001 ish, early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, and I remember loving that because it was like the one of the first times I saw like a comic as like a rock star. <laughs> Because it sounds like a fucking nightmare. That would be like the quickest way to bomb. Yeah. But see, like, okay, you've, you've done comedy at like a mixed open mic with music and stuff. Sure. And you know, like, you know, no one's listening to you. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine at a strip club where no one's looking at you. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> right? <laughs> They'd be like, why does the DJ keep talking? <laughs> like, well, I'm playing early 2000s rock hits. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh, man, that'd be, that'd be rough, but I, I want to do it, man. I just you know what's to- funny about that is like um, like when I first started doing stand-up, like my uh, my oldest brother, I like uh, he lied to my mom and he told her that I was doing uh, comedy at the Spearmint Rhino. Really? Yeah. I was bagging groceries at High V, right? And I'm like, I look at my phone and my phone is blowing up. And then like, I got like a bunch of text messages from like my dad. It's like, you need to come home right now. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? I'm like 16 years old. So I was just like, bro, what the heck? You know what I'm saying? So my brother, my oldest brother, he picks me up like nothing, nothing is going on. You know what I'm saying? And then like, I get a call from my mom and then like, I'm just like getting torn up over the phone. Like she's like, yelling and stuff like that what do you think you do da, 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 da. you know it's just like i was so confused i was like what is going on you know what i'm saying like that that's a hell of a brother right there yeah, no, right? no 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 that's real no i yeah. am I'm like, <laughs> come on man uh, I, I, I was more upset that my mom like actually believed like stand-up comedy would be happening <laughs> at strip club at a strip club i was like come on mom like yeah. seriously like really oh no that's crazy yeah, that's funny uh, so yeah, this is running the light. Uh, and I knew, I kn- as soon as I knew we, we were talking about strip clubs, I knew Richard would press, press record. I oh, fucking snap. knew it. <laughs> That's cool. That rolling start. Mm-hmm. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, uh, I'm here with David Terrell Green over here. What's up? Uh, awesome local Omaha comic. Yeah, uh, man. and I'm going to start this off with uh, how's your week? what do you do this week? Any shows? Um, no shows. I need, I want to do more shows. You Surpre- and I were, you and I were on a uh, power hour. Yeah. I mean, you know what the thing is, is just like I haven't really gotten like asked or booked to do a lot of shows. I mean, like it doesn't really bother me, but it's just like, I mean, it's kind of those things. It's just like, well, you want to do more than just open mics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, you know, I mean, and not that there's nothing, anything wrong with open mics, but it's just like, I mean, outside of like Power Hour, I think the last show that I did was, um, goodness, the KP, uh, KPAO yeah, with, Omaha. Uh, yeah, Omaha. Omaha. Yeah, yeah. That, I think that was the last one I did. You know what I'm saying? That was back in May, and it's almost like August. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not complaining or anything, but it's Things like, ebbs and flow, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, that's the thing. It's just like some moments, you know, like you got, you know, show after show, and sometimes you don't. So it's yeah. just one of those things. It's just like you just have to stay ready. You how, know, was, um, how was Power Hour, man? It was a very tough crowd. And here's um, the thing. Roman Bill, they, they can book a good show. They, yeah. they, they, they put on a good show. They do it. It was mm. a good show, quality-wise. Yeah. Um, but man, that crowd wasn't, wasn't you, there. You can definitely tell, uh, when like an audience is not like feeling it. No, they you weren't, they weren't there. Yeah. Like it wasn't until people came in for this next show. Yeah. They started picking up. Yeah. Like, uh, I was just telling them I was doing my set. I started with some newer jokes I knew would work. Mm-hmm. Wasn't working. It's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, and so I'm just gonna go in straight into my Catholic jokes, man. That always works. Yeah. And I do a joke where I say the priest tells me you up. Nothing. Lady in the front row goes, that's not right. And I went, that's the joke. Yeah. I had to stop in the middle of the set. Go, that's the, I, that's the joke. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And I tried to end with one of my better jokes. The, uh, idols joke, mm-hmm. um, dead silence. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I okay. like, I stuck my head out there. Like before the show started, I was like, nope. You know what I'm saying? I just kind of, I just can like sense that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But outside of that, I was doing, uh, editing, uh, for this, uh, this new film. Uh, called Clean Mud, Dirty Water. Uh, we filmed it in February and we finished in March. So we're right now just kind of like in a, like post production and stuff. Nice. Like that. Tell me so, what that's what that's about. Uh, the movie it uh, is short film. Uh, I wrote it, directed it. Uh, basically, it's about this uh, this drug cook uh, who goes to like an unlikely source uh, to you know to help him you know get revenge on this guy who robbed him. I wrote that back in uh, August of 2018. And uh, we, you know, started kind of picking up steam, like working on it 
September 2018, I moved back to Omaha 2018 of October. And then, you know, we, we, things really started, uh, you know, cooking. So it was just where, like, where were you from before that? I moved to Vegas. I'm, I grew up in Omaha. So it's just it. like, I grew up in Omaha, you know, in 2014, I moved to New York city for college. I came back in 2016 and then in 2017, I went to Vegas. Horrible mistake, by the way. <laughs> uh, side note, uh, moved back, was ready to get to it. So we, you know, we filmed it. That was, it was pretty fun. It was a fun experience. You know, um, it's probably the most, uh, professional, uh, project that I've worked on, you know what I'm saying? Since I've, you know, cause I've really, when I went out to uh, college, I went to film school. So it's just oh, like, yeah? you know, one of the things with film school, um, like as far as like the acting thing goes is, you know, you, the filmmakers would come and find like the actors and be like, Hey, do you want to be in my, my film or whatever? None of them went to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like they went to a lot of other people. So I was like, all right, screw it. So then I went every single day after class, I would go to the uh, the open mic in New York City. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I've, there's a lot of open mics there. So I would do about Wait, like- where did you go to college? Uh, New York. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So New York. So um, where I went, New York Film Academy, it was uh, the schools in Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was just like, yeah, so yeah. Um, after classes, uh, I would go out to the open mic and I would probably do about- two open mics a day. So it's just like, you know, so a week, it would add up to about eight a week. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, and then from there, I would kind of hang out with a couple of the filmmakers and I started to kind of get this, you know, this uh, this itch for like film. But at the same time, I was also developing like comedy. So now I know how to kind of fuse, you know what I'm saying? Different things and different elements. You know, one of my favorite, uh, you know, directors is Tarantino. Yeah. You know, uh, and I, I'm a big fan of how he's able to kind of add the elements, you know what I'm saying? And like bring stuff, you know, uh, drama and bring comedy and bring suspense all into like this, uh, this package, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, and that's kind of like, you know, it's been following me since. So I'm the very experience. Happy. Yeah. Yeah. The experience, you know, it, it was really fun. Uh, filming it so uh hopefully i'm planning on uh putting it out 2020 you know okay what I'm for the film festivals and you know we'll see what happens from nice there. So, nice yeah. man keep me posted i can't wait to see how that goes yeah, it's man. gonna be fun it's gonna and be fun. anything else you've been doing this week i mean that's about it you know what i'm saying as far as like you know because the thing is it's like you know uh like we have a deadline you know what i'm saying so it's just like so like the deadline a lot of it as a matter of fact it's like i'm gonna be going to go work on it as soon as we, i finish right. up here right, right right so it's just like you know a lot of times with the deadline is just like, you know, you have to, you know, you have to get certain things ready at certain times. So it's just like, you know, if you have like uh, the rough cut, for example, so yep. the rough cut has to be ready, uh, let's say by like August the 3rd. You know what I'm saying? So the rough cut is finished August the 3rd, which means that a better cut needs to be finished by, let's say, September the 3rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So that that we set certain dates for things to kind of get going. So. I, I know that in a much smaller level, like with this... Uh, I don't get to, I'm not, I'm lucky enough. I don't get to do the editing. I have yeah. Rich over here and he's amazing at it. Mm -hmm. And Marge over here doing a lot of the back end shit, taking notes yeah. and just make everything, make, making the gears turn. Sure. Uh, but like, Hey man, after this, uh, what, it's usually what Thursday we get a rough cut and then yeah. Friday, Hey man, tell me everything how to get finalized. Yeah. And then we got to run. I think we put it up sun. Like I found it's 30 minutes now. So like we can put it up Monday at like 1130 and then we're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Editing uh, sucks. Oh yeah, when I used it's to do, so annoying. I used to do a live podcast. It only worked for like two months. Yeah. It was a monthly show. A lot of things were wrong with it. Uh, mostly me. And <laughs> but when we used to edit it, it was just like I fucking hate doing it. Yeah. I hate working with Audacity. Yeah, it was just I would just do the most laziest, like cut, pop, 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 yeah. move it on. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is, is like it takes you like all day. Yep, and then it's just like oh. How long is this? Like a minute, 30 seconds? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, how know, much did I cut? Nothing. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, you know, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of like, a, I've been very, very hands-on. I've done, I've put out like two films, like on YouTube. Yeah. But it's like, I've been pretty like hands-on with that. But like, I think this is probably the most I've been very hands-on yeah. where it's just like, you know, and, and with that, you have to learn how to trust people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, because there's a lot of people in Omaha, they say they're about it, but they're not about it. And right. I've had to deal with that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I've gone through a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, a lot of it. Like we had this web series called The Gangsters. That was, um, it was it was sort of popular. You know what I'm saying? Like I would go to like Walgreens and people would be like, oh my God, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was kind of cool. But in the same process of it, I didn't like doing it because I wasn't happy with what was being put out. 
but I kept doing it because people were like, oh, well, this is popular and da da da. And then I just kind of let people just kind of determine, oh, yeah, let's put this in here and let's put that in there. And it's just like, and I can tell you so many stories about that freaking web series. I hate that web series so much. I'm so glad it's over, but. I mean, it's a learning experience because then you learn, okay, because sometimes people try to put their own creative input in. Yeah. It's not all bad because there are some things that I miss, you know what I'm right. saying? And you need creative people like your team around you be like, hey, don't do that. You should do this and we should go and do this route, you know, because you don't have all the answers. But then there's sometimes when you have people who don't really like contribute or, you know, and they try to like, oh, well, we should do this. And you're just like, all right, I got this. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've, had, I've had to tell people. We, we got it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you have to find it in the most respectable way you can tell them. You can't just tell them to piss off. You know what I'm saying? If so. you're working in a group project, whether you're putting on a show, mm -hmm. a comedy show, or like I, I've known it in this thing, yeah. uh, in this little context, like I trust Margie and I trust Rich sure. with everything. And we would, I can tell that these guys are as passionate about it as I am and just working together to make the product that at the end of the day, you're proud of. Yeah. If we're not proud of it, we're not going to air it. Yeah. And there's some stuff where we've done. It's like, I'm just, maybe we're not going to air it. And yeah. we just, we talk about it and you, you got, everyone's got to be on board all the time. Mm -hmm. Like no one, no one can half-ass anything. Yeah. And then that's how you make a good show. Absolutely. I mean, like seeing, just seeing the setup here. I mean, it's just like, you know, this is nice. Kudos to you guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause you get, you have to have like a, like a group of people. I'm slowly starting to find that group of people, but at the same time, it's still like, you know, you don't want to like lone ranger it, but you know, sometimes you get, you have to, because it's just like, there are some people that are just, you know what I'm saying? They're just not about it. You know what I'm saying? You just have to find people like this. Omaha is like really talented. Like, I think that like, it's really talented, but at the same time, it's one of those like things where it's just like, you have people who are like really talented and they're like, Hey, wouldn't it be nice to, do so-and-so. Yeah. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's one of those things where it's just like, you know, I, I don't, I don't think I know what I'm, what you mean by do so-and-so. Well, it's like, all right, well, like, I right, think of it this way. You have people who like, kind of like, oh, we're going to brainstorm this idea. Like, oh, wouldn't it be oh, cool to hell do this? Yeah, 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 and yeah. then we do nothing about it. Yeah. So like, we talk about how it would be cool Oh, it'd be cool to, you know, to have a podcast and it'd be cool to have, you know, do the, the stand up shows and da, 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 da. And then we do nothing about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But there's, but you have people who are insanely talented, but it's just like, bro, what, why are you doing this? You know what I'm saying? So it, it's the, do you want to open a bar type of situation? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I get that. Absolutely. I get it. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like it's an all over thing. Like the only difference between like super talented people and people that go nowhere in their lives is, is those people actually did it. Yeah. I feel like that's just at the end of the day, it's like, just got to fucking do it, man. Mm -hmm. There are some really great comics out there that are probably going to go nowhere. Because in every state, in every city, there's amazing talent. But they're, they may not just do it. Yeah. And that fucking sucks. I think Omaha will find its way as far as, like, I think we're I think we're starting to, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the train is starting. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the train is starting. You know what I'm saying? It, it, right now, you just have to leave the station. You got to leave the station, You know man. what I'm saying? So, But I think, you know, you know, like the back line has been doing and, you know what I'm saying? You go downtown and you see, you know what I'm saying? College World Series and stuff like that. I like, I, like, I see this, it's starting to like make motion and stuff and we'll get there. We'll, we'll definitely get there. It, it's going to take some time, but I think that, uh, that we'll get there. Yeah. You know, yeah, cause yeah, yeah. I was around like the back line when it was like in a completely different, like I was there. It was in a basement. If I remember yeah, correctly. It was, it was a yeah. basement. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I was there when it was in a basement. So yeah. it's just like, you know, so. For it being in a basement to seeing how it is now, it's freaking incredible. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, but it, it takes time. So it's just like, you know, but yeah, nothing, cool. nothing good happens like quickly. It's yeah. just, you gotta take your time, man. Yeah. Yeah. Only thing, at least for me, it was my week was I did Cameron's open night show, oh, a late night show. Yeah. Uh, I did doing an acting role and that was fun as hell. Yeah. Uh, just working with like a, a script, me and Q, we were like bouncing back and forth mm -hmm. and, Stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of really cool shows here and, like, different styles of shows, doing different styles of comedy. Sure. Like, it's always fun, you know? Like, just doing the same set, set over, not the same set, but, you know, bearing it up and doing new experiences. It's always fun and weird and mm. keeps keeps you on your feet. 
That stuff does seem like fun. I've never been to one of uh, Cameron's uh, shows before. Dude, you should go. It's always a blast. Even if you're just watching. Yeah. Like, he interviewed uh, someone running for local council. Mm -hmm. uh, a band came on, and his one of the guys' name was Topher. So they had Topher with Topher, where Cameron's uh, girlfriend, Julia, made three different types of tofu with weirder ingredients. Like, one was burnt. Uh, what's that sauce in Chinese food? Soy sauce. Soy sauce, yeah. Uh, the other one was sitting in mustard, mm -hmm. and the other one was sit in a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch. Yeah, and they all they each had to try it and guess the ingredients. Yeah. Uh, they had Houston Alexander on, on once doing something with gummy bears. I remember. That's cool. Uh, man, that dude was. I've met him on a few occasions with that in Omaha Live, and he can be the nicest man in the world, but the scariest motherfucker. Yeah, I, I shook his hand once, and I think involuntarily I said, "I'm afraid of you." <laughs> He's a, he's just a big man and yeah. he's looks he looks down on everyone, not mm -hmm. on purpose. Yeah. Um, but it's just a fun shit. Music's always a uh, great comedy. Like they had Sam Bontrager on and he killed. Yeah. And he writes, uh, Cameron writes sketches. I've done a few sketches with him. Like we did a Kim Jong-un and Trump one. <laughs> I, I, I was Trump. Uh, oh, I thought you were Kim Jong. I oh, thought crap. I was Kim Jong yeah, too. Right. Yeah, um, let down. It was it was weird, but it was it was mm. cool. Uh, I felt like I was typecasted, but right? <laughs> <laughs> right. But it was cool. It was cool. Um, it's like it's always fun. It's always fun to do different stuff. That's why I love doing wrenches. Cameron always like he um he oozes that persona of like a late night talk show host. Charisma, like he owes yeah. us that charisma. That just yeah. like he'll command two hours of a stage. Yeah, and it's just some. Crazy shit, and it's a good show. I wouldn't mind watching that on television, man. Uh, he used talk. to record it on Facebook Live. I don't know what happened, but it used to be like a Facebook Live thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was some, it was some good shit, man. Uh, it was fun. I gotta go to one of those one of these days. Yeah, next time it's on, just go go watch it. It's fucking great. Yeah, yeah. I have to check it out. One of one of my favorite shows uh, that's still going around. Have you seen Omaha Live? I've never watched it before. I, I yeah, I've seen it. Was I was it on good? an episode. It was good. It was, it was good. good. I think I was on an episode, but like I didn't know I was gonna be on. I think an episode. you and I were on the same episode, were we? like with magi the magicians or uh, Hotline. I don't, I don't remember. Like, I just remember that like I was, I was sitting next to Kill Theodric, and uh, he made a joke about like uh, there are black people in Omaha. But not right now because David and I are here. You know what I'm saying? This is like that was the joke. <laughs> Never and mind. I think like, it was a different. I think yeah, it was a different episode. And I didn't know he was gonna say that. So like when he said, it, I was just like, "Yep, absolutely." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like I I didn't know what the what the bit was for. I just was I just sat next to him, and then I next thing I knew, I saw like cameras and stuff. I was like, "What's what's happening?" You know what I'm saying? So I think that a lot of the problem with that is is that um comedy is too local. If yes. That makes sense. Yes. So it's just like if I'm like from the outside and like if I make a joke about uh I don't know, the Henry Dorley Zoo or the Woodson building. It's just like, yeah, okay, there are going to be like people who get that, but then at the same time you're going to like, come on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's already Omaha Live, so you're already playing. I'm assuming I've never seen the show. Does it play off of Saturday Night Live? Yes. Okay, so... It aired right after Saturday Night Live. Okay, so if it... Okay, there you go. So if it airs right after Saturday Night Live and you have jokes that are just kind of like just talk about Omaha stuff, like at some point, like people are just going to be like, what? what is this? You know what I'm right. saying? Like instead of kind of just like making your... And that's one of the things like in comedy for me is that... um even though like I live in Omaha, my stuff isn't Omaha. Omaha. Exactly. Right. Because the thing is, it's just like the same material that I use in the back line downtown has to be the same material that I will use in Atlanta or Texas or Mississippi or wherever I do comedy. So it's just like, you know, I'm heading out to LA. I'm thinking every joke, man, yeah. can't, can't have any Omaha jokes. Exactly. Um, I mean, like you can have, but they had a great news segment. They had sure. a really cool news set because it was Cameron writing mm -hmm. and Matt Thompson on it as well. Yeah. And there were some really great news jokes. Okay. And that was some fun shit. Well, I, I think that you can do like Omaha jokes if it's just like, oh, well, you're talking about where you're from. Right. Not referencing Omaha. Right. Because like if I go, if you do a show in Los Angeles and you talk about high V, people are going to be like, what is he talking What's about? What's a high V? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, no one's going to get that joke. Or you make a joke about Scott Frost. No one, like, 
okay, people who watch sports know about Scott Frost, but in all intents and purposes, you have to go into that with the mindset of, okay, people probably don't know who this guy is. I can't do a Piggly Wiggly joke in fucking backline. Exactly. Jokes can't be local. No, I, I feel it. Yeah, I right. Feel it. It's like, yeah. You gotta be in that. You gotta be in that mindset sometimes. Mm -hmm. And people think it's like, no, I should write whatever the fuck I want. It's like, yeah, but like, people don't have to like it. Oh, well, <laughs> true. And I think that as a comedian, kind of just starting, and like I learned this from um from a gentleman by the name of J C Morgan. You know, he taught me that like when you start out, you can't just like go for that you know, Dave Chappelle, shock humor type, right. Bill Burr, you know what I'm saying? Just go for the throat type of stuff because you're not established enough that where you can say it and people are still going to want to book you and put you on stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to kind of start kind of, you know, a little slower. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, you know, and when I first started, I didn't know anything about like, you know, how to write a proper joke. So all my stuff was like black jokes. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh, black this, black that. You know what I'm saying? Watermelon this, fried chicken that. Oh, it's funny. Ha, ha, ha. Because this is like as the very, very first time I did stand up, it was, goodness gracious. I was, uh, I was like 15 years old. It was at the church talent show. The joke that I did. <laughs> oh, oh I'm in. Now let's do this. <laughs> man, I, goodness, like. I did a joke about uh, Chad Ochocinco, and he is this that a, a foot, he's that's a football a, player. Okay, cool, 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 cool. This is around the time when uh, I don't know if they're still together, but like this is around the time like he uh, he headbutt his wife Evelyn Lazada, and I I made this joke about it, and I started off by saying I was just like, well, yeah, it's wrong, but. I can't believe I said this. Man, it's wrong, but like you ever thought maybe if he had a reason to do it, you know what I'm saying? Oh it's just like, shit. <laughs> Oh, oh man. shit. And let me tell you, that audience, like they were shocked. But like the thing was, is that I was pulling it off though. Because like there was a group of people, like I think that like they brought like a, this is like a youth event. So they were like kids from like Central and stuff like that. And they were cracking up uh, over it. And so like I was pulling it off. But at the same time, like there are people that were just like, they, after that, they're like, we're never doing that again. Yeah. This guy cannot get on stage ever again. And like thinking about it, like back then, it's just like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said that. But like as a 15 year old, I mean, like you just want to like, I, I would just, I just want to make people laugh. Like I didn't really care about, okay, well, if I say this, I could hurt this person or this isn't the audience. This isn't the venue. This isn't the yeah. place for that. I had to learn that as I went along. So when I met up like JC Morgan and he like told me, okay, well you have to understand that, you know, all these like super blackity black jokes. Yeah. They're cool and everything, but you have to think of it this way. Most of the people in this audience is going to be white. That's what he told me. Like right hand to God quote word for word. So you, they're not going to understand a joke about, Something like, you know, that weave. They're not going to understand right. that because they're not from that world. So you can't, like, even though it may be funny, you have to find a way how you can bring it the, the, the level to like, so everyone can understand it from there. That's when I was like, okay, I'm going to like, you know, start kind of really kind of developing. And I think the reason why you're saying a joke, like going back to when you're 15. Sure. Right. You're saying it. Cause like you're making all the other 15 year olds laugh. Yeah. But you know, the why, if it's if just to be funny, yeah. you're going to get not booked later because it was just funny to you. Exactly. Right. And so when you're going through the throat, like you're a Dave Chappelle who's been doing it since he was 14 for like 30 fucking years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He realizes like, hey man, sometimes I can't, like, it's not about hurt. Like, what's the reason behind a joke? Is it to hurt someone? Mm -hmm. Or is it, what it should be is maybe to make a point and maybe think about it I think a real good shocking joke, it makes you think about why you're shocked. Yeah. It, it should talk to something about yourself. Sure. Less than something about like, oh man, he said the dirty word. I laugh because he said dirty word. That's yeah. why I hated Sam Kinison. Uh, Kinison was, we uh, earlier episode, we ended up watching it and it was just, he made a joke about how he hates rap music mm -hmm. and everyone who does rap should get fucking shot. And I went, okay, nah. <laughs> so I was really, I was much against it. I had to turn off for like an hour. Yeah listen to some music and get back to it because like the purpose of purpose of that purpose, <laughs> the purpose of it was so, the purpose, the purpose, uh, the purpose of it was just to piss people off. It's like, that's not fun. It's not funny. 
It's not funny. And I, yeah. I don't want to be pissed. I want to yeah. enjoy it. There's yeah. people I don't agree with, and I just want to laugh. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you want to be shocked, don't be a dick. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respect other people. Don't be a dick. Yeah. That's the one thing, at least, you know, uh, I, I mean, for, for myself, when, uh, when I write material, I think it's just a lot of stuff that kind of, like, applies to me. Yeah. Like, you know, because um, like I said before, when I first started doing stand-up, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to make people laugh. So it was just like, so it, like if it was, you know what I'm saying? Top. And that's the thing is just like, this is how you can tell like if a person is like good, like a potentially good comedian or if it's someone who's just like, uh, I don't know about this guy. This is how you can tell, at least for me. I'll give you two examples. Actually, yeah, I'm going to give you two. The first example is like the topical humor. And that's actually not two examples. It's just one. Remember when Pokemon Go came out? Yeah, yeah. Everybody. It's a good point in 2016. On the, the happy planet. Part. Everyone on the planet. Like, I went to an open mic. Right hand to God. Like, four or five people had jokes about that. Yep. Okay? Yep, and yep, it's yep, just yep. like, goodness gracious. Like, and then weeks later, months later, like, I remember, like, a month later, person goes on stage. So, I was playing Pokemon Go. It's just like, bro, like, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, those trends, like, they come and go. You know what I'm saying? And so, it's just like you know, when you rely too much on the trend because it's just like, that's the type of stuff that late night talk show hosts do. And if, you, if you're if you doing know topical, you got to be writing every day. Every day. It's hard in the mic scene because in an open mic, you're working on the same joke for like weeks. Exactly. For like months getting exactly. ready for a show. Exactly. No, I, I wanted to do Trump jokes. I was a guy that I loved studying politics. Mm -hmm. When I was doing speech, I was reading thousands of news articles every day. Mm -hmm. I was about it. And like, I was ready to do political jokes. Problem with especially the Trump administration, new shit's every week. Yeah. It's tiring. Yeah, and it, but it's too easy. It's too, also, it's too easy. And if you're writing it smart, like you're talking about specific events. Yeah. Like the Omarosa thing happened a month ago. Yeah. If this was any other administration, I could still do Omarosa jokes. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Can't now. Can't talk about the Mueller report. I um I went to a, uh, a show Maybe in L.A., I went to a show in LA to go uh, support one of my friends. Yeah. Like every, like four comedians before her, like they talked about Trump. Yeah. And about the, about the third comedian who like, oh, Donald Trump. Like I heard someone go, this again. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it, yeah. Because it, it, it was starting, because it was old. Like, okay, we get it. Guy's a jerk. We get it. Yeah. You Be know fresh or move on. Exactly. And now, and that's my thing. So it's just like, that's why a lot of times, like I stray away from like the topical stuff. Now, like, for example, I have a joke about Tiger Woods. Yeah. Now, even though that happened in 2009, I'm like, oh, you remember that? But it has to do with what I was talking about. Right. So it's not like I brought up something. Oh, let me try to resurrect this old topic. It was more of, okay, well, I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about marriage. I'm talking about how I had cousins and family members who told me, oh, well, if you date this race of person, all your problems are going to go away. Like, no, they're not. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to, so I'm going to use this Tiger Woods thing. You know what I'm saying? Wait, 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 run run, sure. run that back. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Up. Up. What's the reasoning? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Yeah, sure. All right. So, that's some weird shit. Yeah. So my, uh, one of my family members, he was just like, yeah, man, like if, uh, if, you know, what you need to do, you need to get yourself like a white woman, man. Cause like these black girls, you know, they loud, they da da da, da you know, white woman, they know they place, you know what I'm saying? They, they, you know, they don't give you no stress and da, da. And I dated a white woman. Can I say nothing changed? You know, <laughs> it's just like, it's, I'm just as stressed, you know what I'm saying? Fucking no. Right? And, wow. And that was like the setup of the joke. And so like, and then going into that, it was like the Tiger Woods thing. You know what I'm saying? I brought up that, you know what I'm saying? Because like his wife was white. And she beat him up with a golf club, you know what I'm saying? Like when she found out what he did. And there were still black women who were just like, amateur. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, what? <laughs> bro, like that's some intense stuff. Like if you get beat up by a golf club, that that will ruin your day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so like the, and that's a, a good example. So like I use that as a part of this bit that's not necessarily resurrecting this old topic, but it's just like, it's shedding light. Like, oh, think of it like this. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, I don't know. I just, you learn that stuff through time. You learn, you know what I'm saying? How to become a better writer, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to material, um, whether it's for film, whether it's for comedy, whether it's for whatever, as you like proceed, you know, and continue to do it, then you get better. Yep. Cause like, I thought I was going to be like on like freaking 
like Eddie Murphy level, like, oh yeah, man, I'm starting in like uh, 15 or whatever. That means by the time I'm 18, like, bro, when I was 18, I still sucked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I don't want to talk to 18 year old me. I don't want to talk to 21 year old me. Yeah. Like I, I like I'm 23 years old and I still have like a lot of like uh work to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like but I'm very proud of like where I've like gone from cuz it's just like looking at how my how my stuff was yeah. at first and you sometimes and that's the cool thing about that's the cool thing about going to like a Los Angeles like an Atlanta, New York City. They have mics everywhere. So when I was in New York City, and I was doing those mics every day. I first went there. It was tough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was bombing heavy, but then out of those bombing started getting better, started, yep. you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. like, that's just how it goes. So it's just like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, the purpose of writing is to focus on why you're writing. Yeah. Whether it's, if you think about it, if it's for a good reason, do it. If it's for a shit reason, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you're writing, just like, why am I putting these words down? Yeah. And then that's how you become a decent or a half decent writer. All right, so let's talk about uh, this week's uh, special, and that was yeah. Chris Rock's Tambourine. Uh -huh. uh, you did something that uh, no one else has done. Yeah. When I texted you, hey, man, what are you passionate about? You said, pick whatever. I like these comics. I think you said Chappelle, Chris Rock, and- So it was Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, Eddie- Yep. Richard Pryor. Yeah. And uh, No One Kill Me, Bill Cosby. I Okay. And, je and I know I understand that, you know, like people probably won't like admit to that right now, but it's just like, listen, however you feel about him, you cannot deny that his stuff was good. I like you. you can't, I never you know? liked Cosby's jokes. OK, so like right. I was I was never like a Cosby fan. So sure. I, I just didn't like it. Yeah. Um, but my question for you is, yeah. why do you why do you like Chris Rock? Why does, why does Chris Rock inspire you? Chris Rock to me, like I I. I see a lot of myself and Chris Rock because like I don't know if you ever like heard him just like tell jokes about like relationships and yeah, stuff yeah but I remember his HBO special yeah yeah it's just like it just kind of is like you wow I never thought of it that way because like that's exactly how I act that's exactly how I you know what I'm saying behave and stuff like that and yeah. I think with with him it's just like because everyone is in a relationship everybody it doesn't really matter like with who, but yeah. it's just like I, everyone has experienced those emotions and those feelings and stuff like that before. Yeah. You know, um, there's so many like jokes, like I could like say, you know, from Chris Rock, but I, I wouldn't do it justice. But like, I think that with him, it's like a observational humor. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of like, he kind of sees like, you know, things and then he kind of just like, well, this is how it is. And then you think about it, it's like, it is kind of like that, isn't it? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I I kind of see myself in that way as well. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't think I'd necessarily say I'm like observational. Mm -hmm. I'm observational about myself. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not so much about like the world. Chris Rock is more observational about the world. And I think that's what I really like about yeah. him. So it's just like. I think that's a time thing. I've noticed like a lot more of comics now, mm -hmm. like especially with newer specials. If you're a newer comic, I think a lot of comics have turned internal. Yeah. Uh, whereas comics of the Chris Rock era were more external. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting watching external comics move into uh, this era. Like, yeah. Tambourine was yeah. a good chunk of it about, hey, man, I'm a shit husband. Yeah. I cheated. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not bragging. I cheated. I was, like, on the road and... You know, I end up sleeping with three different women, man. It's, it's like fucked up. I, you know what's fucked up? Here's the thing. When, when guys cheat, it's like we, we want something new. You want something new, right? But then you know what happens? Your woman finds out, and now she's new. She's never the same again. So now you got new, but you got a bad new. You know, you got bad fucking new, man. And I know every woman in here right now is like, fuck you. Chris, what the fuck, man? I thought, you? I thought you was all right. You? Come on, Chris. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with men? I know a bunch of women are thinking that right now. Every woman in here is like, fuck you, Chris. And every guy in here right now is going, three? That's it? Just three? 
But speaking on just something like Chris Rock, he talks about, you know, his uh, his marriage troubles, mm -hmm. his infidelity, you know, his children, raising his children, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. in custody, dealing with custody issues. And, you know, then you have like Dave Chappelle where he's talking about like, you know, his children getting older and trying to relate and stuff like that to his children. Like, I like it when people like, kind of like they grow up and they mature some. Yep. So it's just like, then you kind of appreciate them even more because then it's just like, you know, it's not like they're going out and they're like, yeah, I'm going to say the same crazy stuff that I said when I was 20 because then there's no, like, there's no maturity. You right. know what I'm saying? Like when there's maturity in your stuff, then I think people appreciate it more. That's why I liked about like tambourine, you know, is that there was maturity in it. Like, you know, he was talking about like the stuff that like he was kind of struggling with, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to just like, you know, some of the stuff like, you know, back, back then. Yeah. Back in like, I remember again, the HBO special around 2001 ish, early two thousands. Yeah. Uh, and I remember loving that. Cause it was like the, one of the first times I saw like a comic as like a rock star. Like yeah. he was in a, that's the one where we went to like South Africa. He went to yeah. a bunch of stadiums and it was like an event. Yeah. Um, but back then it was very typical early 2001s, you know, men are like this, women are like this, ba 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 ba. And I'm, even as a kid, I never was a huge fan of that style because mm -hmm. I, if I'm being honest, sometimes I always felt like I, uh, my behaviors and mannerisms and how I act were always what comics would call being a woman. And it always kind of felt weird um, because like I'm emotional, I'm, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. And so it always felt a little weird, which is kind of growing up maybe why I look at my jokes differently the way that I do. Well, I, I think that a lot of that, you know, like a lot of those comedians, there are, they are emotional, like how Chris Rock, you know, talks about like, you know, like the custody stuff mm -hmm. is just like, that's emotional. Yep. Even though he presents it in a way that's like funny, yeah. but like the emotional wear and tear of having uh, like a, like a court judge decide whether you're allowed to be with your children. That's an emotional thing. And so it's just like, but he presents it in a way that's like funny. And so I think that like a lot of comedians are like emotional, but like, you know, I mean, I think now people are starting to kind of like express those emotions and those fears and stuff like that, as opposed to just like, oh no, well this is, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it's, you're seeing that a lot more in tambourine. That's why I really like tambourine. Yeah, tambourine was good. Um, there's some parts like, again, he still sometimes does like women do this, men do that. And it's yeah. like, all right, well, okay, cool. Sometimes you can't, you know, sometimes a jacket fits really good. You're going to keep wearing that jacket. I get it. Mm -hmm. Um, but the stuff I loved like there's that part where he just, it doesn't even feel funny, but it's engaging. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, it, no matter what relationship you're in, you got to make sure you, if you're a uh, front singer, those are the days you're going to be the uh, lead singer. If you're tambourine, you play the fuck out of that tambourine. When you in a relationship, you're in a band. <laughs> you're in a fucking band. And when you're in a band, you have roles that you play in the band. Sometimes you sing lead, and sometimes you're on tambourine. <laughs> and if you're on tambourine, play it right. <laughs> play it right. Play it with a fucking smile. Cause nobody wants to see a mad tambourine player. And he keeps that thread. He keeps an idea and he runs with it. That tambourine line is referenced like three times mm -hmm. where he says, talks about cheating. It's like, yeah, man, I guess I wasn't playing my tambourine. I get it. And then ending line, hey, man, I'm on Tinder and I'm butt ass naked holding a tambourine. Mm -hmm. So there's Chris Rock from even in the beginning has a great sense of he's going to take an idea. Mm -hmm. He's going to run with it and he's going to make it to its weirdest extreme part. Mm -hmm. Like the relate, like the God thing. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you're going to church every week, man. You must not believe in God. Yeah. And it's like, holy shit. Yeah. And he's taking it to that conclusion. He's running an idea and going to the end with it. Mm -hmm. And that, that takes some guts, man, because yeah. that's confidence in your idea. Mm hmm. It's confidence in your worldview. That is confidence in your writing that you're going to take an idea and you're going to keep going mm -hmm. long past to maybe the point where like the audience is on the same page with you and you got to bring the audience with you. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting. And that's what I love about Chris Rock. Mm -hmm.
I agree. Yeah, that's that's why I love Chris Rock so much. Is yeah. like he'll take an idea, may not always agree with his ideas, but he'll at least commit to it. And it's like yeah. I want to see where it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you uh, you summed it up like uh, perfectly right there. You you and I have been writing sure for a while now. I've been doing about four ish years. Yeah, uh, and you've been doing it since you were sixteen. Yeah. Uh, when we are when we're taking an idea. Yeah. When when do you feel ready with an idea? When do you feel ready? take it on what's that first step that goes you know what this is my idea i'm gonna run with it what's that first step for you when do i feel ready to do an idea yep on, like on stage or a, it's ready for a joke or ready to perform an idea um it could even be with film because that's your also your forte um i think that it's one of those things you just have to like do it i don't really think there's a moment where you're like i'm ready mm. because like if you try to determine are you ready? Then you never will be because then you'll be fair. like, oh, you'll be like, oh, well, you know what? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, like this idea is just like, um, I don't like to reference myself because I feel like a tool, but it's just like, but going back into that, like that, what some of the, like the newer material that I've like uh, wrote was just like, um, you know, like I had like when my brother got married and then, you know, I had like, you know, my little cousin's, and they're like, you know, they're like, I saw these children when they were kids and now they're like 16 and 17. And it's just like, oh man, it's just like, and they're complaining about, you know what I'm saying? Like guys and stuff like that. And some of the stuff that they're complaining about is some of the stuff that I have been guilty of doing. And so, and they're, but they're confiding to me about it. And so this is like this internal thing. So it's just like, and writing that, you're just like, oh, I don't know if, that idea, you know what I'm saying? But then it's one of those things like we just you have to embrace it. You know what I'm saying? You have you have to like embrace that, you know, that that openness and then like, you know, and then kind of, you know, you live with the results. You take it on stage and you just kind of see what and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean that yeah. that's just kind of how it is with me. So it's just like, you know, I, I don't really pick like, you know, oh well if I is it time for this yet? Mm. It's just kind of like, well, you know what? Let's let's give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? And there's sometimes that jokes, you know, um, they don't work out. Yeah. And there's sometimes you gotta, you know, fix it a little bit more, put it through the ringer. And then there's sometimes just like, all right, toss it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, there's really no way of knowing until you actually like jump Dude. into it. But I know. usually I usually have one note for myself. Mm-hmm. If I'm talking normally I'm talking to myself. It's normally a joke begins with I'm walking home, I'm walking, I'm driving somewhere, mm-hmm. and I'm talking to myself. Sure. And if if I can stop for a second and I'm smiling mm-hmm. or I'm laughing, yeah. it's like then it's ready. Yeah. Then I, then I'm ready to write it down, mm-hmm. ready to perform it. Um, when it comes to is a joke finished, like keep practicing till you're comfortable, yeah. till you can throw it in the vault. But don't worry about if it's perfect because it won't be perfect. Mm-hmm. Like the, I, I've been doing the same idols joke. I wish I was like my idols for four years. Mm-hmm. I'm still thinking of ways to improve that joke. Mm-hmm. There's still ways to tighten. Sure. Um, And sometimes you just got to, like you said, you just got to get ready and embrace the joke, embrace it, and just run out with it. And I think that's, it just, you just got to have to take commitment. And that's a frightening thing because I think no matter how sloppy you pretend to be on stage or whatever your persona is, you still want everything to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You still want to crush it. And that crushing, it comes from wanting to be the best. And that's a fear. Yeah. I I think that also when you do, um, when you, when you go into it with a new idea, you keep an open mind because there's sometimes that people will laugh at something that you didn't expect to be funny. Right. That's like, always, that's a, that's a gift. Like you write something like, Oh, this is going to be funny. People don't laugh at that, but they laugh at something else that you said, setting up the joke. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the, like the opening jokes that I like did was like the, uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I heard my grandmother use the N-word for the first time. Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? That's said, oh, all the time. You know what I'm saying? That, I said that out of frustration at an open mic. I did not intend to say that. Right. I asked a question. The question, like, it was supposed to be a completely different bit. And, like, I said, well, you guys ever hear your grandmother use the N-word and people were quiet. And I said, you guys looking at me, like, all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was pissed. But then people started laughing at that. And, like, th- that, like, kind of killed everything else that I was going to work on. Yeah. So sometimes like, you know, when you go into it, it's just like, you know, you keep like an open mind that like, okay, like this part 
punchline may not work. But they laughed at this, even though this wasn't intended to be a punchline. Let's take that, make that the punchline. Exactly. Find a different way to, you know, to beef it up. This is a skill that I think it takes you years to finally get good at. Mm -hmm. Callbacks, referencing older jokes, theming. Like, uh, fucking Chris Rock. Thank yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> I was like, he does that a lot, yeah. Yeah, it's like Chris Rock does that. He references beginning to end. Yeah. There's a premise. There's an idea. Yeah. There's a through line. Mm -hmm. And that is something that, like, especially if you're new, man, you really want to because you see the grades do it, but, like, you can't yet because mm -hmm. you're you're still trying to figure out what's a punchline. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's one of those weird, difficult things, isn't it? Like, trying to connect make every joke kind of in its yeah. own way blend together i think that just comes with just like the more stage time like when you have more stage time because like when you do an open mic you get about like what three minutes three to five yeah three minutes ain't enough for you to i mean you could do callbacks you could could but it'd be the same joke you, you, it would, yeah it would be a very strong could because for me I don't really, when I do those open mics, I don't focus on, um, oh, let me get a call back. Right. What I'm focused on is, let's see if these jokes work. Now, when I get some more time, you know, it's just like maybe like 10 minutes, different story. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you have like, there, I, bro, I went to one mic, one mic in New York City, and you only had a minute and 30 seconds. Do your best. Like, you can't yeah. call back nothing in no minute and 30 Hell seconds. No. Hell no. Yeah. Of course not. Some of us can barely finish a joke in a minute, 30 seconds. Exactly. So right. it's just like, you know, so some, so it honestly just depends. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, it, it honestly yeah. just depends. I, I think guess. any problem a comic will face can be answered with, you need more stage time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that, that really. Or just quit. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that too. Um, <laughs> I've heard that yeah, too. Yeah, I've heard that uh, uh, before too. Yeah. But. Well, I've started four years in certain little things. Like I have a joke. That uh, backhanded compliments, I think I even said it on the uh, TV special ones, backhanded compliments, where worst that's ever happened to me is a guy comes up and says, hey, man, this place is great. Do you know any of the real comics? That and actually happened? Here's the real story. Here's what actually happened. I, I have to retool that joke because not comics don't understand what actually happened. That's why it's funny. I was doing a set. I thought I was killing it. Mm -hmm. Guy who was in the front fucking row. I get off stage. Guy walks up to me. He's like, hey, man, when are you going up? And I went, what? I you, I just okay. It was like that was the most disheartening. I'm not memorable shit. Yeah, but it's like ah oh, man. It's like and Ke I think it was Keelan. It was standing there right there looking at me, fucking laughing. <laughs> it was like because it's funny, but like how do you explain that to someone that's not an open mic? Every of course, day? of course. So you retool it. You you retake your idea and mm -hmm. you say it's like, hey man, do you know any of the real comedians? Because we've. I think I've heard the phrase "real comedians" used against me once. Um. Mm -hmm. We're it running. can get clicky. It can get, it can get, well, not just clicky. It's more like if you're not, okay, co uh, not comics will, I've heard this before by someone else. I think it was Blevins. Uh, you think of comedy as two things. Mm -hmm. Like most people who, when they think of comedy, who aren't in comedy, they think, oh man, big venues, big crowds. Eddie Murphy's delirious wearing a red jacket. Of course. Right. And not comics go like, no, like 12 people in a bar and a bunch of us is getting together telling jokes. And like sometimes people who are seeing that they're expecting is like, well, when's the real show? Yeah. Like, yeah mm -hmm. When are the real people coming up? Yeah. Um, and that's it's a weird that's weird dichotomy. Yeah. And so like I do a joke about getting arrested. Yeah. And uh, cop when I was arrested, cop did ask me, it's like, hey, man, why are you so chill? You're really chatty. Why are you so chill? I went because I'm a comic. It's not my worst night. I was like, that's a perfect place to could have put a callback. Mm -hmm. Some guy earlier asked me if I know any of the real comics. Mm -hmm. That's a fun little callback, but they're little. Yeah. And it's only if I have like 20 minutes yeah. to play with. Because I think a callback works also best if you forgot the previous joke. I think a callback works really good. Mm -hmm. Like the other joke has to cool down. It has to be a big joke. It has to be a really funny joke. It has to be a really good joke. Because like your friend can call back like that funny time that he thought happened. Mm -hmm. But if he keeps recalling back, it's like, that wasn't funny, man. And he's just like, he's fucking annoying. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta be smart, I think. And sometimes that just comes with confidence and security again in your material, in your ideas mm -hmm. to want to bring it up again. And sometimes you just... Sometimes you just got to risk it. And I, I appreciate a comic that does risk it. And I think Chris Rock, I think any comic that does do callbacks, I think has confidence in that idea of, of the tambourine. Even though the, the tambourine, 
it wasn't that funny of a joke, but it was a great yeah. use of language mm-hmm. and visual imagery that I think explained his point and his exactly. thesis of his, uh, uh, I guess call him special. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to think of it that way. It's just like, you know, just because it wasn't as funny, it's just like, you know, for like what it was connected to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So what it was connected to was this whole buildup of what is currently going on in his life. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, okay, this, that, and the third, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, it's like almost like symbolism. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it was like, yeah. exactly. You just didn't call it tambourine just for the sake of like, oh man, oh, going to a, you know, a music store, uh, guitar. Nah, it's nah. not, that's not catchy enough. Freaking uh, ukulele. Nah, man, harmonica, mm, tambourine. Mm. Cool. Let's go with that. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing like that. So yeah. it's just like, you know, you think about the pacing of your jokes, like where you put a joke in a set. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's super important. Yes. I, I think about that a lot. Um, I also think about, cause the thing is, it's just like, yeah, like the where to put it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, if, you, if I talk about like, you know, uh, one of the things I say, you can't choose your family. You know what I'm saying? Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? I go into this joke, go into a joke about my cousin, go into a joke about, okay, now my brother's getting married. He's a part of my family. Talk about the relationships. Or da, 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 da. Talk about this, jo- this joke about this strip club. Then I go into the next joke. I need to stop going to clubs. I need to stop partying. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like the, con- like, so the pacing yeah. is connected. So it's not like, oh, okay, well, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, st- and I'm still working on it, but it's just like, but it's, it's not like, okay, well, I just made a joke about this. Let me just go back and make another joke about that because then they're just like, wait, what? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Any comedian, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, a lot of those guys, like the pacing, if you just pay attention to like, how they get into the next joke. It's really, it's smooth. And they do jokes in jokes. Like he'll go on a tangent and that, that takes, I keep saying effort and commitment, but it takes like talent yeah. to go off. Like, I think it was, he did the bullying. He did a whole bullying segment. Yeah. And then he went back. He's like, all right. So I was at my daughter's uh, freshman graduation orientation, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like that, well, it I mean, takes serious form, and I you can tell what he did is he took those bits and yeah. segments, went to open mics, did a bowling bit, yeah. did the orientation bit, and then just put it together in a way that sounds good. At the same time, that joke also could be connected to his side rant about bullying. Yes, so it's just like so he's talking about okay, daughter's uh orientation, bullying, da 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 da. Yeah, orientation connected to bullying. Yes, you know what I'm saying. So yes. it, it's not so it's not like it's completely just like what. What are we talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, you know, yep. connected in its own. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So when yeah. I think about formatting for me, I'm like I said, the OCD has some fun traits for me, but I think one <laughs> thing is I have like a, I, I think about like math, like mm-hmm. a little bit. It's like start little. I always open. I love, especially if it's a set like goes along. I always love opening with the idols joke. Uh, it got me the TV gig. Uh, it's just a fun one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it starts cute, but dark. It allows it just as like, this is just me up front. Boom. But yeah. I start small. I start little jokes. Just get them in the door. Get them getting going. Sure. And then I go big. I make sure that there's th- any joke that has to do with me being a Catholic goes here. Any joke that has yep. this. Like I think about, you got to sometimes think about themes. It can't just be a splatter house. It's got to be, it's got to be like a poem in a way. Like it yeah. can't just be all over. It has to have a form. And Chris Rock, I think really, if you look at Chris Rock, there's a form. There's, there's a way that Chris Rock writes a joke mm-hmm. and there's a way that his specials are styled. 2001 Chris Rock, 2017, I think he references, he referenced 2017 in that one, so I think that old. Two different, maybe they're talking about two different themes, one's external, one's internal. One's about divorce, one's about the world, one's about, I think a lot about about politics. Mm -hmm. Um, But, and the way they're forming their sets, very similar. You can tell, Mm -hmm. like a Jezelneck set, it's going to have his own style. A Kyle Kinane, a Patton Oswalt, a Dave Chappelle, a Sarah Silverman are all going to have their own form. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's part, it's just as much part of your voice than the j- word you're saying is how you're putting your jokes together. And that's yeah, important absolutely. too. I've never seen Sarah Silverman. Oh, Sarah before. Silverman's newest Netflix. Maybe it's not her newest she, Netflix special, but the one that came out like a year ago. She good? Hell yeah, she's good. No, 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 no. She has the best poop joke I've ever seen. <laughs> like it is one that I think about Mm, without being hyperbolic once a week mm-hmm. uh, how good it's written it's a really smart joke maybe not once a week but I think about it a lot is it wrong that I said that like I've never heard her stuff before? no there's a lot of comics that I've not okay. heard of before like I'm not 
well versed. I wasn't well versed in like Hicks mm. or I've never heard Kennison before I did this thing. Yeah. Um I mean like I know she does like stand up, but like I was just like I've never been like, I have to check this out. I was just like, oh okay, that's cool. Yeah, no, you know it, what I'm saying? So it's give like, it yeah. give it a listen. It's, it's some good shit. Mm-hmm. Um God there's like there's a lot. Like I think there's so much, especially now, there's so much comedy that it is very hard for everyone to watch the same shit. Sure. Um, Because, like, whether I'm watching it, I can go to Pandora and listen to it on random. Mm. I can go to Netflix and watch a bunch of them. I can go uh, podcasting. I can go anywhere. Or even, oh, yeah, Comedy Central exists. And, like, there's just a huge yeah. venue, and it's saturated in a good way where good comics get their voices out. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, I'm gonna forget his name because uh but yeah, there's just a lot of really good comics and a lot of and what's amazing, a lot of different voices. People yeah. from all over get to t- uh, say their stories now yeah. and it makes it really interesting. Uh so I think what's great is like, hey man, this person said a really good story. This person has a great uh worldview. Man, you gotta check them out. Yeah. And I think that's that's what it is now, and that's super exciting. It's not like when we were I started this podcast because I bought a lot of vinyl of comics. Yeah. Cause I'm just a big old nerd. And, uh, but there was a period where that's all you, like people couldn't afford HBO of course. or even before that people just bought records and in doing so, not a lot of people got to hear a lot of different voices. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's just weird going backwards in time like that. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, of course, man, if you haven't seen it, it's not, it's not bad. Uh, give him a shot. Oh, Tig Notaro too is another good one. Oh, Tig Notaro. Tignataro is just like, she's really good, really witty, but monotone. And I mm-hmm. love monotone. Yeah. It just busts me up every time. I love it. Um, I'm not always a huge energy person. Like, I don't like like high energy a lot, but I love Chris Rock. Yeah. Uh, I think it's kind of why I don't like Robin Williams stand up. You don't like Robin Williams, period? No, I love Robin Williams acting. I was about to say, Google like, Hunting's my favorite movie of all time. Like, dang. No, nah, Google Hunting is one of my favorites. Uh, but I couldn't get it. I couldn't get behind that stand up cause sure. it's a lot of energy and it's like, I'm not huge on energy, but I do love, I love monotone and stuff like that. Mm. I think it just, it gets, it gets me crazy. Uh, so Tick Taro and Sarah Slobin are some really good ones. Uh, but yeah, no, just ask. That's why I love talking to other comics. Man, what do you like? What do you like? And mm. you get to hear so many names you've never heard of. Yeah. And that's just, that's the beauty of it. I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to like, uh, stand up. I guess like. I don't know. Like when it comes to certain people, it's just like, uh, I don't, I don't know about that. And maybe, yep. may, and I don't even think that's just, I don't know why it's just like, there are just some people I'm just like, mm, you know what I'm saying? It's just like people I, I've never really thought they were interesting to begin with. I don't know. That, that's so, that sounds so mean. I don't want to sound mean. So it's just like, I don't know. Like I, I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, it's just, I don't know. Here's how I you view what that. I'm saying? I, yeah, I do. I yeah. mean, there are people, people are out Comics, yes, we're telling jokes, we're talking about dumb shit all the time, but in a way, without sounding too head up my own assy, we're storytellers. In our of own course. way, we're storytellers, we're performers. And hey man, there are actors I don't like. Sure. I don't like Mark Wahlberg. I don't get it. I don't get the appeal. Really? Nah, no. Yikes. No, it's not a fan. Not into it. Uh, you Tom don't like Cru- Marky Mark, man? Nah, I don't. Don't, don't like- say nothing about Tom Cruise now. Come on, man. I was literally going to be the next person. You don't like Tom Cruise? Hit and miss, man. Hit Come and miss. On, Hit and miss. Hit and miss. Hold on for a second. Why don't you like Tom Cruise? It's all right. Why? Hold it's on. It's just all right. It's just all right. He fills a space. That's what it feels like to me. He just, he fills a space. Actually, no, that's not true. Chris, uh... Don't don't get pissed at me, man. Who who's in Guardian of the Galaxy? Who's Star Lord? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt fills a spot, and that's what Chris Pratt is for me. Sometimes Chris Pratt fills a spot. Um, Tom Cruise doesn't fill the spot. He's always like he's a seat filler. Sometimes it feels like Tom Cruise is a seat filler, not fulfilling a role, and and that's certain things. And I've seen some just shit Tom Cruise movies. That's. Um, Marky Mark, always bad. I love making fun of Marky Mark. The only Marky Mark movie I enjoyed was Four Brothers, but I was like eight when my dad took me to it, so it was a different experience. That hurt, um, man. I can't believe you don't like Tom, man. Tom's a good actor. He's, you know he's all right. He's all right. Let me just say this, all right? I think we need to, like, get over this whole... Like, I, a lot of people who don't like Tom Cruise, the first question I ask is, like, why? And like, well, well, like they try to stumble over that. Your your answer is probably the first legitimate answer I've ever heard. It's just heard. boring. I've not been excited for Tom Cruise. Every person 
They're like, oh, well, I mean, it's a, it's a Scientology. Yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I was like, <laughs> that's a horrible reason not yeah. to like someone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's the, like, I the girl in King of Queens was a Scientologist. She was? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dang. Uh, during King of Queens. Really? I think so. Wow. But uh, the only thing I don't like Tom Cruise is like, I'm not, I'm not excited to go see a Tom Cruise movie. I'm always down for a Tom Hanks movie. He's a Mr. Rogers. I'm on board day Tom one. Tom Cruise makes better movies than Tom Hanks. Whoa. Whoa, no. Like, you can have more fun watching a Tom Cruise movie than a Tom Hanks I movie. I feel something when I watch a Hanks movie. No, no. I I'm feel not saying Tom Hanks is a bad actor. I'm just saying yeah, that, like, you- I feel nothing when I watch Tom Cruise. That's that's where I'm at. I feel nothing Bro, when I, I watch I will, Crowley. like, watch Mission Impossible, like, like a million times before, like, I go and Ghost watch, Protocol's like- Ghost Protocol's the shit. Ghost Protocol's the shit. I'm down. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You could replace Tom Cruise with any other actor. No, you can't. And it'd be, because, it'd be like, fine. No, you can't because Tom Cruise is like in a league of his own. Is like, he? He really is. Like outside, or is he just short and charismatic? Outside of like Jackie Chan, who else does his own stunts? I, okay, okay. Here, maybe this is different. This is, this is my stance. I love that Jackie does his own stunts. Yeah. I respect that Tom Cruise. I don't give a fuck if you do your own stunts. All I care about is the acting good, is the stunt choreography good, is the directing good. I All I care about is the package. I don't give a shit if you do your own stunts. So you don't, I don't like Top Gun? Fuck. I never seen it and I don't care. <laughs> I don't see it and I don't care. Um, the fact that they made a single is like, I don't give a fuck. Um, granted, I will care about a Mission Impossible movie on who's directing it. Man, I can't believe this. Ghost Protocol's good. I'm just saying Ghost Protocol's good. Mission Impossible 3 sucks. I don't know. I don't know. I'm and just, 2 well, is okay. I mean, well, I, well, I, I, I'm just saying, this is like, as far as like, well, I understand like what you're saying, but it's yeah. like, as far as like, just like not liking people, like they, they're like. But a comic, a comic is an actor. And I, so you cannot like an actor. True. That's where, that's where I'm at. Yeah. And I agree. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because there are certain comedians I'm just like, oh, I do not like that person. That person grinds my gears. I, I don't like it. I said I don't like, like I don't like Williams. I'm not a fan of uh, Ricky Gervais. That's fair. No, that's Every fine. Every person on You don't the like planet, a jackass. <laughs> listen, bro, he's, he's so rude. He's like, he's so rude, bro. He's just like, like what he'll do is like, he'll say something offensive. And then it's like, for example, like, um, all right, do, do, like, uh, do you love your mother? I, 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 my, my mom listens to this every week. Hey, ma, I love you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let me, let me rephrase this. All right. So, all right. That's like, all right. Goodness gracious. You just ruined my point. All right. <laughs> what do you want to say? No, nah, man. I hate okay. my ma. Fuck my ma. All right. Is that what you want me to so, do? So, like, do, do you love your mother? Yes. Your mother's fat. Oh, you get, you, and if you got do that? So you get offended at that. And I'm just like, why did you get offended at that? You shouldn't be offended by that. Stop being uh -huh. soft. That's Ricky Gervais. That is, no, that is 100% that Ricky Gervais. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's just like, that's, I don't. That's Jimmy Carr. And Jimmy, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Carr, also Jimmy Carr. Here's what I don't like about Jimmy Carr is he says I'm roasting my audience members. This is the most planted shit mm -hmm. I have ever seen. Yeah. Like he did a bit. I saw his like, recent spe like a recent special of his where what he did is like audience text messaged me and I'm going to make fun of their text messages. And with that's some <laughs> bullshit. That's plan right there, that's man. That's bullshit. That's plan, man. Oh. Stevie Wonder could see through that. That's hilarious. Ah, man. that's some horse yeah, shit. Yeah, so it's just like, so like, and that's how I kind of feel about Ricky Gervais. It's just like, you know, like he does this type of stuff. Like he's like, oh, well, like, oh, I'm going to like, you know, people just need to stop being soft. But it's just like, OK, but when people like clap back at you and like you, you get offended, you're being soft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I can't like I, if I smack a stray dog in the face and then the stray dog tries to bite my fingers, yeah. I can't be mad. Like, why is the stray dog trying to attack me? Yeah. It's just like, and so, and the worst part is, is like British people, man. Like I used to, like I used to live in New York and I met so many British people. British people like, Ricky, you have to be on a certain level of intelligence to enjoy Ricky Gervais's Oh, you comedy. mean like when people used to say, you gotta be certain, you gotta be so smart to, uh, oh to like uh, Rick and Morty? Yeah. <laughs> Some Jesus. bullshit. I'm like, all right, listen, like you guys acting like people, like, they act like like British like the office the British version of the office is better. It's better because it it's like, shorter. Ah, uh, because also American office sucks. Come on, man. What? No, it's Seriously, fine. It's fine. Serious? Look it's at not your personality. It Dog. shouldn't be something you quote every day. It is fine. Bro. Parks and Rec's better. And no, it's not. What? Wait. No, it's not. What? Well, no, I thought it's we were not. Also, I don't like things that drag on too long. Bro, if it wasn't for The Office, there would be no problem. That doesn't mean that. anything. That doesn't, that doesn't like, mean anything. The Office is, like, funnier. Like, all right, Steve Carell, by himself, 
His performances are way funnier than everyone. Well, you Parks remember that right. show went on for like three more years after he left, and it that's sucks. The, that's the studio's fault. Yeah, but it's just like, but as far as like the characters, I also and don't like, like the, cringe. I also don't like cringe. That's I, the funniest I don't, part. I also hated Napoleon Dynamite. I hated a lot of cringe movies of that era. I hate. But cringe. Napoleon Dynamite isn't like cringe. It's just awkward. You know what I'm saying? Like that's this. They're offshoot of each other. Like it's not punk. No, it's pop no punk. way. No that's man. The same. The thing. Office and like Napoleon Dynamite is like apples and oranges. No. Bro. It really is, bro. That's like saying the who. Uh, I'm sorry. That's like saying Green Day and uh, Dead Kennedys are two different or off are two different bands. They're like in the same. I don't aisle. listen to either, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> but like the thing is, though, is just like, bro, like The Office, like the writing, like that episode when they had like the safety training. Yeah, I know that with the safety dummy, bro. Parks and Rec couldn't do something like that. I, and watched- I think it was better without it. So you're telling me that the scene where like they had the safety training and Dwight like pull out the knife and he did like you yes you don't think that was funny I I I, I tuned out I tuned out oh and God. that's the thing here's the thing I could say I don't like something but the point of this I can objectively go hey man here's what's doing right here's what's doing wrong okay that so is true I can look at it's like hey man it's doing something right here sure. I appreciate it sure it does not register with me sure. But I appreciate you definitely it. definitely lost a bunch of fans because of saying that comment about li- the office. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. But I, I like Parks and Rex more. I, I just, that's, that's where I'm at. I, I like it more. I like the cast more. Uh, I don't like cringe. And I think Parks and Rex, Rex relied on cringe more, less. And it was more on like taking people to different personalities, throwing it together, seeing what happens. Not just like Dwight is socially awkward. Mm. Let's all look at Dwight. He's, and that's also why I hate Big Bang Theory. Uh, besides the fact that it's not funny. <laughs> yeah. But like, look I at this character. Yeah. Like, look at this character. This character's awkward. Let's laugh at the character. Since, <laughs> since we're talking about stuff that's not funny, um, Friends never made me laugh that's at all. That's fair. Friends. I think Friends is whack. Friends is white noise. Black people don't exist in Friends. It. All those seasons. Where do they live in? New York? There's one. No, no, no. One. Ross dated one black girl for like half a season? Half a season. Right. Like, ah. Uh, Ten years, half a season. Goodness gracious! It was crazy. I don't like uh, that. I think that show's whack. I think How I Met Your Mother is whack. It's bullshit. It's some um, bullshit. <laughs> yeah, man. I think Moms I, is fine. Moms is all right. Moms, what's Moms? It, it's another. I hate Chuck Lorre. Chuck Lorre did Two and a Half Men. He did Big Bang. Hey, hold on, man. Chuck Lorre nah. was like Two and a Half Men was funny nah. until they got rid of Charlie Shane, bro. Two and a Half Men was fun. Yes, it was. was it? Oh, yes, it was. I don't, I don't agree. I don't agree. Hard, hard pass. Hard pass. You don't Mike like and, nothing. Mike and Molly was fine. Mark, Mike and Molly was fine. I like Mom a little bit more just because they have a really good cast. And again, it, it's char- I got characters. I like characters, not situations. Like if I had to pick, I hate Family Guy. Family Guy's hilarious, man. I like. Don't I can't, say I can't even think. I can't even think of a cart- uh, adult cartoon show I can think of right now that has like really interesting characters. Rick like and Morty. This. Rick and Morty is good because that's an interesting character. Rick and Morty is okay. All right, I can see that. Like, I've never like bust out laughing. Like, it's fun to watch, but it's like, but like when people were like telling me about it, people were like, "Yo, you're going to laugh." Oh, like, I hate when people bust, do this. Stop laughing I hate when that happens. Yeah, people are acting like I was about to piss my pants laughing, and I watched like three episodes. I was just like. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was expecting something funnier. It was enjoyable to watch, but it wasn't like. Oh my god! Like I'm, I'm like yeah. leaning over. Oh my, I can't breathe. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's just like you know, I, I, I don't know. I think, I, think, I, th- I think a good purpose of this is like, it's okay. It's okay. It's all stem from like, hey, is it okay if I don't like Sarah Silverman? It's like, yeah, it's cool. Or I've never heard Sarah Silverman is what you said. And it's like that's cool. Yeah. There's so much shit out there. It's okay if you haven't seen anything. Uh, but what I do hate is when people say, hey man, you gotta check this out. Sure. Do, oh, hold on. Don't overhype something. Sure. Just say it's good. Watch it. I think it's your thing. And then don't hype it after mm-hmm. that. Cause then you're in your head. All you're doing is just thinking that like 10th level shit. Mm-hmm. And it's like, ah, it's just ruined it for me. Yeah. It's ruined it. Uh, King of the Hill. Fuck it. I love King of the Hill. Ah, I hate Family Guy. That's fair. That's fair. I just like the characters. I know. That's, that's fair character. because yeah. King of the Hill is funny. So it's hell like, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's funny. Also growing up in the Midwest. Like I get it. Oh I, my God. Yeah. I, I get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There was one about the order of the arrow and it's like, holy shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was in that. Yeah, it's it's bullshit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> and Texas and Nebraska are two different places. But they like are. it's that's there are some similarities there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel you on that one. Mm. Midwest is something. It really is, man. Not great, but it's all right. No, 
Oh, man, we are. So, right. It's okay. We it's right. okay. I granted, I liked Portland when I went out to Portland. I guess I like. There's the so trees. many worse places to be. Like, I mean, hell like, yeah. People act like you know Omaha, Nebraska is just like. I'll tell you this right now. I went to small town. I'd rather be in Omaha than small towns. Yeah, I mean, like, all right, think of this. I went to, okay in school, New York Film Academy. People yeah. from all across the globe yeah. showed up. Now, I talked to this one person. She said, you know, where I, where I, uh, where I grew up, you know, like it, they, you know, there are people who would kidnap children and, and, and force them into sex trafficking. And, and, if, and if they refuse, they'd kill them on sight. I was like, well, where, where are you from? And I was just like, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. And she went, ooh. I was just like, damn. <laughs> I was like, I was damn. like. I was like, I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. I was just, I'm like, I'm like, wait a second. Like your place kidnaps kids. Like, oh, what's so wrong about what we have? It's like, seriously, like that. Oh. Her face, she like looked. She was like looked petrified. Hey, at I least we don't have Pete Ricketts. Exactly. Like, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's probably what she thought. Oh, Pete Ricketts. Pete oh, God. He made he made the Cubs winning fucking suck. Because he owns the Cubs. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he makes he makes the Cubs winning after a hundred years suck. I mean, yeah. I didn't like the Cubs. See, I love all, I love an underdog with. story. I love eh, screw the Cubs. I I nah. I love I love White team. Sox, baby. Chicago White Sox, baby. That's that's adorable. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't wait, Chica- wait, I shouldn't wait. be going this you're, hard you're for going, a franchise you're going that sucks Chicago? right now. Well, you're going to Chicago, but you, you're not going to be a little proud that Chicago, uh, that the Cubs brought it in? No. All right. Okay. okay. Um, listen, all my family, they're from Chicago. I'm like, I was Chicago White Sox. You okay. know what I'm saying? But I shouldn't be talking so heavy about a franchise that sucks. Hey, right I'm now. a Husker fan. I get to talk shit. I get to rep a team that sucks every year since 94. <laughs> Five, sorry, 95, 97. I'm going to <laughs> like, 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 oh. say a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's the one with the most shit about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like, yeah, we, we've sucked for 20 years. Yeah. We went to the Rose Bowl once on a technicality. Well, dang. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We went to the Rose Bowl because I think another team, because I don't know, because college football sucks. That's just, that's just boiling it down because college football sucks. Um, but rapid fire questions. Sure, uh, let's do it. Let's do it. First one, honestly, yeah. if you could take anything from this special to yeah. learn and grow as a comic, what would it be? Uh, the Tamarine special? Yep. Vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to be vulnerable uh, to your audience, you know, because yeah. sometimes, you know, that makes people appreciate you more. Yeah. Uh, when you're vulnerable, you can actually find more things, you know, find... Uh, more joy in the things that you know uh, that are currently going on. So yeah. I think uh, vulnerability. Be I think be vulnerable and share your worldview because of course there's stuff that's Chris Rock that is from a worldview that I'm not going to get. Sure, but you know what? It's I'd rather someone say their worldview than try and like hide it. And I think that's important. Be vulnerable. Be yourself. Say your views, and just go with it. Uh, next one. Favorite joke that you write. I think my favorite joke right now is uh is a joke where I like I talk about like I like why I like watching movies by myself yeah. and like uh, I was watching Django Unchained uh and my brother leans over to me and he says uh, this isn't historically accurate true story by the way and I I wanted to smack him in the face because I was like bro it's a movie <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's just like this why it's a movie. Don't you know show them glorious bastards then. <laughs> Seriously, right? Goodness gracious. It's just like, I hate it when people like try to put their opinion in things that don't matter. That's so I, I like to like watch movies like sometimes alone. So yeah. 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 Uh, best, best movie watching experience was aliens, alien, aliens. alien. Cause I hate, I don't like aliens. I like alien. We talking about best movie experience. I think I have to say the dark Knight. I think that yeah? was like, yeah, that was the first time actually, that was, I think that was the first PG-13 movie I got to see. You know what I'm saying? I got to uh, go with my friends. You know what I'm saying? And every, it was like the midnight showing and everybody was dressed up as Batman and the Joker and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was freaking awesome. I was so. lucky enough. I was 25. I think it was like last year. I uh, know so I was 24. I got to see La- Raiders of the Lost Ark, Ooh. 35 millimeter, Ooh. the first time in theaters. Ooh. Oh, it was, mm, man, that was some good shit. I yeah, loved, man. holy shit, it felt good. Um, but also Aliens, I was alone in my house, 55 inch TV. Sure. I think it was a Blu-ray and I was alone. 
Mm-hmm. And it was so good. And sure. that's, I loved that horror movie. It was one of the few horror movies I love. Mm-hmm. That, Get Out, and like a few others. Yeah. Like a, just a horror movie that just like has its own sense and it's not relying on jump scares. It's tension. Of course. And uh, those are just horror movies I like. Sure. Um, also Her. Great romantic movie. I just like any movie with its own sense of style. Sure. Like Her, Alien, Fury Road are some of my favorite movies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, favorite joke. Um Man, favorite sandwich. My favorite sandwich? Dang. Um, yikes. What do I get when I always go to Subway? Um, I like, uh, currently, I like that sweet chicken teriyaki, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I like that sweet chicken teriyaki. Even though uh, my my buddy, John Dima, shout out to John Dima, he likes to get in the steak and cheese. Mm. And he always puts like the uh, like the, chip, uh, the chipotle with sauce on it and stuff yeah. like that. So he's pretty good at that, but. I don't know. I just, I, I eat any sandwich, man. Honestly, really? I'm not picky, man. I, I, like I love a good, a good sandwich. Like it, that sits me down. Yeah, man. I have a good, it's my night. Like I look going to Star Deli right by uh, Barley. Yeah. And I go in and get the Mufleta. And I hate the olive. Uh, Star Deli. Yeah. Star Deli is in Benson. It's like right across the street from Jake's. Okay. Yeah. I'm going uh, to check that out. It's then. good shit. I get the Mufleta and it's basically, uh, it's some Parmesan cheese, mm. uh, a bunch of meat, but then you do an olive spread. So I get rid of that olive spread, put some spicy mustard on it, yeah. heat it up, and I have it with some jalapeno chips and a soda. Ooh. And it's a, it is just a good time. I am ready. The night's good, man. Night's good. I'm going to have to try that. I had some good shit. Yeah. Um, why? Why do you tell jokes? Why do I tell jokes? Why do you get up on stage? Oh, man, because I like it. Yeah. It's fun. You know what I'm saying? I like to have fun. You know what I'm saying? I like to do the stuff that I uh, love. And, you know, and uh, I would kind of go a little crazy if I was just like, yo, this is so good. I'm not going to get up and do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I have fun. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, man, it's just like if I'm no longer having fun doing it, I'm just going to stop doing it. So it's just like, and I've had moments like that before where it's just like, you know, I'm not having fun. So I stopped. And then when I started finding the joy in it again, started again. So it's yeah. just like, you know, until I no longer have fun doing it, I'm, you know, yeah. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess the most important question is where can people find you? Yeah. People can find me. Um, You can find me on Instagram, uh, DT green two five seven. Uh, that's on IG uh, as far as, uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Dave T TV. That's D A V uh, T slash TV. That's YouTube. Uh, I also, ironically, have a uh, a new podcast that I just started. Hey, yeah, woohoo! What is it? It's called Pull Up and Wreck. I just started it uh, a week ago. Uh, so the full length episode is it's nowhere near as nice as this, but you know. <laughs> Baby steps, you know what I'm saying? But you can uh, find it on Spotify. Um, you can also find, uh, for all you music listeners out there, you can also find my music on Spotify. Yeah. It's under Dane Marino, uh, D-Y-E-M-O-R-E-N-O. That's uh, Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, was, all that. Was getting your podcast uh, on Spotify a pain in the ass? Because it was for us. No, because I went to Anchor. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can go to anchor.com. You know what I'm saying? Shameless plug. You yeah. go to anchor.com yeah. and it's uh, a little bit easier to get your stuff out there. Okay, you know cool. Because we did it through a SoundCloud, the RSS feed. Oh, word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because I did like sound, I did uh, anchor.com and then like like less than a day, they're like, it's available on Spotify. Send me a notification. I was like, oh, that's cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah we, so. the first week when the episodes were going up and like Margie was like sending me messages, like, hey man, we're on Google. Hey man, we're on Apple. Yeah. Hey, we're on Stitch. I was like, ah, I was like a small kid. It's like, it's happening. Yeah, I was yeah, shaking yeah. my hands in the air. It was great. Yeah. Um, For me, it's a lot, like, I, don't, I don't have a lot going on except for this. Uh, you can find it, uh, this podcast under websites, podcasting on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, apparently iTunes. Uh Woo-hoo. I thought iTunes was dead. <laughs> it's uh, like it kind of is. It kind of is. Um, yeah. Google, Apple, Stitcher, yeah. Spotify, yeah. Uh, SoundCloud. Check out my SoundCloud, apparently. Yeah. And, uh, and then on Twitter, Red Shoes Plum. Uh, Plum with a B at the end. And uh, Instagram, Plum Jeremy. Man, and that's basically, that's me. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, that's it. David, dude, it's a blast talking to you. Thanks for having me, man. Dude, thanks for coming on. And uh, that's that's been our episode. Have a great night. Yes, sir. I remember, again, the HBO special around 2004.